so good morning everyone uh, today we will discuss about the concept of rpc remote procedure calls so we already know what is inter process communication and what are the different methods to communicate between different processes so here in remote procedure calls we will discuss what is the concept and how it is working what are the various classification of rpc <clears throat> remote procedure calls allows programs to call procedures located on another or other machines when a process on a machine a calls a procedure on machine b the calling process on a is suspended and the execution of the called procedure take place on B. Information can be transported from the caller to the callee in the parameter and can come back in the procedure result. <coughs> no message passing at all is visible to the programmer. This method is known as a remote procedure call or RPC. <coughs> so it's, an, it's a message passing method. So already we discussed about IPC mechanism. We have two uh, different mechanisms. One is message passing, another is shared memory concept. Here we are using a message passing model in remote procedure calls. It has widely become widely accepted because of the following features. Simple call syntax and similarity to the local procedure calls. It is ease of use, efficiency, and generality. It can be used as an IPC mechanism between process of different machines and also between different processes of the same machine. <clears throat> it is similar to the commonly used procedure call model. It works on the following manner. So before uh, explaining the working, we'll go through the block diagram of RPC mechanism. So this is the block diagram. So basically, uh, there will be a client machine and a server machine. So, when a client want to get a work done from the server, the client will send a call parameter and there will be client, client step, client runtime, then RPC runtime, server step and server. So here in client step, we will create a packet and this packet will send through the central network. <coughs> So this network will be unpacked in the server step and it will execute the corresponding program and it will unpack the results and it will send to the client. So this is the mechanism that we are using. So this is a working model. This is caller, this is callee and this is a client process and this is a server process. So in client process, at this point, it will call <coughs> the server and it will send the parameters. And all these requests will be received by the callee or the server. At that time, the client will stop the execution and the server will start the procedure here. And after execution of the procedure, it will send back the result to the caller. So this is the mode of working. <clears throat> and here now we will go through the working manner for making a procedure call the caller places arguments to the procedure in some well specified location control is then transferred to the sequence of instruction that constitutes the body of procedure the procedure body is executed in a newly created execution environment that includes copies of the arguments given in the calling instruction. After the procedure execution is over, the control returns to the calling point, returning a result. <clears throat> okay. Now the implementation in RPC. So the implementation of RPC involves five elements. So these are the five basic elements in RPC, client, client step, RPC runtime, server step and server. 
the client step is one instance of rpc runtime execute on the client machine the server step and one instance of rpc runtime execution on the server machine now steps the steps provide a normal procedure call abstraction by concealing the underlying rpc mechanism a separate step procedure is associated with both the client and server process so we have separate step for both client and server to hide the underlying communication network rpc communication package known as rpc runtime is used on both side <coughs> now the functions of client step the client step is responsible for the following task on recipient of a call request from the client it packs a specification of the target procedure and arguments into a message ask the local rpc runtime to send it to the server step on recipient on received the result of the procedure execution it unpacks the result and passes it to the client then rpc runtime it handles the transmission of messages across the network between client and server it is responsible for retransmission acknowledgement routing and encryption now in server step <clears throat> on receive receipt of uh, the request message from the local rpc runtime it unpacks it and makes it perfectly normal call to invoke the appropriate procedure in the server so once it gets the data unpacks it will uh, do the appropriate action in the server then on receipt of the result of procedure execution after the execution of the procedure you will get a result in the server and it unpacks the result into a message and then ask the local rpc runtime to send into the client step so this is the functions of server step now what is marshalling <clears throat> marshalling arguments and result the arguments and results in the rpc are language level data structure which which are transferred in the form of message data the transfer of a data between two computers requires encoding and decoding of the message data Encoding and decoding of messages in RPC is known as marshalling or and unmarshalling. So encoding is marshalling, decoding is unmarshalling. <clears throat> to summarize, the remote procedure calls the call occurs in the following step. The first step, the client procedure calls the client step in the normal way. The client step builds a message and calls the local operating system. Then third step, the client has sends a message to the remote. Then remote has gives the message to the server step. Then in the fifth step, the server step unpacks the parameter and calls the server. The server does wor the work and returns the uh, result to the step. Then the server step packs it in a message and calls it as a local. The servers are sends the message to the client. The client gives the message to the client step. The step unpacks the result and returns to the client. So this is the complete procedure for remote procedure call. So basically, we have two types of uh, function calls: call by value and call by reference. In the case of remote procedure calls, we are using call by value method, usually because uh, uh, the actions happens between two different machines so they don't have a common physical memory so in the call by value method all parameters are copied into a message that is transmitted from the client to the server through the network it is time consuming for passing large data types such as trees and arrays etc then call by reference as we all know that there will be a common memory space and the, we are sending the RPC mechanism does not use the call by reference mechanism. It is impossible to use this method because we are using separate machines. So distributed system having distributed shared memory mechanism can allow passing of parameter by reference. Only if we have this uh, method like a distributed system with a distributed shared memory mechanism can use call by reference. Normal RPC uh, is uh, cannot does not use the call by reference mechanism because uh, they have different address space. And these are the different categories of RPCs: callback RPC, broadcast RPC, batch mode RPC. Okay, so to understand what is call by value and call by reference, we'll go through the concept.
programming <coughs> so as we can see here call by value call by reference call by value in this parameter is passing method values of actual parameters are copied to a functions formal parameter and the two types of parameters are stored in a different memory location so here the calling parameters are in different location so any changes in made in the function are not reflected in the actual parameter of the caller the caller and call is variables are in different location in call by value but in call by reference both actual and formal parameters refer to the same location so any changes made in the function are actually reflected in the actual parameter so this is the basic difference between call by value and call by reference this is a programming example here we are using two integer in the main function a and b and values are 10 and 20 we are calling a function here and we are transferring only the parameter called by value so here when we interchange the values here uh, it will not actually changes the result in a and b the a and b will be the same and x and y will be different but in the case of call by reference we are actually sending the address that means both a and b x and y this is a pointer both these points to the same loca address location so whatever changes happens in this function will reflect in the main function also so that is the difference between call by value and call by reference and here in normally in remote procedure calls we are using call by value since all the machines are having different address space so these are the concepts in a remote procedure call and this is a block diagram client server network client client step rpc runtime server server step rpc runtime so here whatever the parameter it will send as a call by value parameter it will pack by the client step then it will send through the network in this lecture we will know, uh, learn about what is known as remote procedure call okay so remote procedure call is quite an interesting concept and what it says is that let's think that you have one computer here and another computer is on the network okay so it's somewhere else but what it does is that this computer provides some APIs okay so it says that it has some procedures it has some procedures which can be run and they can be run from this computer itself and it gives you the feeling that you are running that function on your computer itself so that is the beauty of remote procedure call so for example if let's say there is a function int sum int a int b okay so this is some very simple function but what happens is that when you call this function so sum 8 comma 5 so what will happen is that this summation the work of this function is not done on your computer but it goes there to the remote computer and on that computer it runs that function runs the procedure and then whatever is the result it is given back to that particular your computer the local computer so this is rem remote procedure call ba basically i am calling a function but whatever function the work is there it is being done on some another computer and then it the reply or the result is getting back to you so this remote procedure call is a high level model for client server communication so basically there is communication between two processes okay that is happening and those two processes are on different computers or they can be on the same computer so it provides programmers with a familiar mechanism for building and this is very important for distributed systems basically all the computers are in distributed systems so they are taking help of each other so this particular computer hack has capability of calculating something and the other computers will have the remote procedure calls for getting those functions done from other computer so why we need remote procedure call 
so the client needs easy way to call the procedures of the server so if on the server let's say there are some uh, services so the client can easily in his code he can write the remote procedure calls and do his work and rpc enables the client to communicate with servers by calling the remote procedures and which is similar to calling something on your local computer so let's try to see how does now what is the thing how does it operate really what is happening when a process on machine a calls a procedure on machine b the calling process on a is suspended okay so now let's try to see what will happen now let's try to see what will happen in rpc so basically now i say let's see the figure and then it will help us understand so one figure here is saying that client is there okay so it calls the procedure okay it calls okay that function sum a comma b and then it calls it this now request is being sent to the server server now receives the request that okay a procedure needs to be called and that is of sum two numbers then it adds them and sends the reply back to the request client okay and it now gets the answer and it resumes its e execution so this is a blocking state okay so this is a blocking call and okay and when this is blocked when it sends request this one executes and sends a reply back then it blocking state ends and it executes the code again so now let's try to see some of the limitations shall we see afterwards or beforehand okay before by knowing this you can understand the limitations yourself okay so let's try to see the figure itself and that will help us understand so this is the most important figure that will help you understand there is a client computer so what it does the, there is a client and there is a server computer so what happens it calls okay i make a lo local call sum and i write here int a is equal to 5 comma b is equal to 10 and i call sum a comma b so now this is a remote call so what will happen this message that okay you need to do the sum of a plus b is sent to the remote machine so but what happens because it looks to you as a local so first it is sent to your local machine and there is a stub here and then it sends your request to the other machine so there is a client is there there is a client stub and what it does now it sends request to the other machine this one receives the request then what happens there will be many functions okay so this computer let's say it provides interfaces for some remote procedures for some difference of a and b okay so int let's say this is also int then we have multiply so it is a multiply a comma b and then double divide a comma b so these procedures are there on this computer so there is a list of functions which this computer has and now what happens this one executes and this receives a request the server now it has to know okay which function is there so of course it will see the function name and from there it will find which is the procedure i need to execute it unmarshals the request so i now see here some word marshal and marshal argument unmarshal argument so we will see what it is so now basically it somehow it gets the argument from your function and then what happens is it basically now executes the procedure and then what happens it has now got a result okay so that result it marshals the result again so basically it gets the result and then it sends the reply back and sends the reply back so this line so it goes here it receives the reply and unmarshals the result so what is marshalling and unmarshalling this is the thing that we need to know so marshalling means basically i have to send a message okay so in that what happens you have to basically in a message everything needs to be in byte 
stored in form of a byte so what happens is i send the function name will be my first thing so this i will form it in form of a string then i will say that okay next thing is it is int type and there is the value okay so i will pass by value so in this one in your rpc there is always pass by value so i will pass by value say that the type is int and then i will say what is the value so let's say 5 then i will see say that okay what is the next argument so it is int again and its value is 10 and then i will pass so i will have the somehow i need to tell him what is my function name and what are the arguments that i'm passing okay then this one receives it so this is the marshalling code i'm sending a byte a buffer or a string where i have all these data now it receives request first it will see what is the function name or procedure name then it unmarshals the argument okay and what happens now he will know that okay which the last one is the second argument then this is the first argument he will unmarshal them argument execute the function sum 5 comma 10 and then he will get the result which is again an int so he will again put it in form of a buffer or a string then he will send the reply back and that reply will be received here he will now know that okay it is 15 int 15 he will get the answer or marshal it and then he will have the value so all the time while the message was sent the procedure was executed and then the reply came so this person was blocking in a blocking call and then what he does now he returns and executes his function okay he gets the result so this way you see that this is the remote procedure call where this function was executed on the remote computer and because of that he had to send a request where he had to marshal all the arguments and the function name and moreover might be the return value what type it is and then all this went now one question you might ask how does this know that okay this function is there on this remote computer so the thing is that this server it has one register register where it has all these apis that it tells other people advertisers that what apis i have or the procedures i can execute so based on that these people can know the clients can know and then execute the functions okay but here you need to handle a few errors one of them is like message when we are sending the message it might fail so those kind of errors you need to handle so I hope you understand what is remote procedure call. Thanks a lot.